live today a couple of things to do today and I'm not quite sure how they're going to go oh well the draw I'm going to do my quarterly prize draw which will always go well because I'm giving stuff away so that's always great um, to do today and I'm oh, not quite sure okay. how they're going to go no, no my volume's working because that's just come out of in my ear but anyway so yeah we'll do our, my prize draw um, and then we'll get on with some crafting so uh, it should be lots of fun so hopefully the people who win the prizes are watching but if not i will follow i will follow up with a message um, uh, um at some stage later today but anyway so here is my little box of fun i've been using this same box for every quarterly draw so it's sort of getting more and more appropriate as the time goes by i've got three prizes to give away today including the mini cut and emboss machine which is the main prize uh, I haven't got mine with me in my craft room at the moment, but it's a lovely little guy. You've probably seen him on my um, board. I give one away every quarter to uh, lucky customers. Um, but this month as well, I also have, as well as the mini cut and emboss machine, I have the sheep stamp, sheep dies and counting sheep um, uh, bundle, I suppose you'd call it, from the latest celebration. So I've got a spare one of those. And I've got a packet of the bedazzled um, bedazzled specialty paper as well from the recent celebration so that's my the that's all we call I suppose second and third prizes today uh, because I have more than one prize it's a little bit different to my normal quarterly draw I've got one prize I've got three prizes and there's people in here that have got more than one entry obviously um, so uh, you will win the prize that um, you get drawn for first and then if you're you know, you don't get second second bites of the cherry, I suppose is what I'm saying. You get the prize that you are drawn out for first and if you come out again the next time, I'll, I'll keep drawing till I get a new winner. I suppose that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but to be fair, I will draw the, um, I will draw the uh, cut and emboss machine first. So if you come out as a winner for any of these prizes and you don't want the prize, so you've already got a mini cut and emboss and you don't want another one, please just message me and I will draw the prize again and then ho and, uh, and, and pop something ex different for you in the mail if you're the winner. But we'll take the prizes as they come and um, we'll take it from there. So I don't have my usual barrel girl today. It's just me in the craft room, but at least you'll all be here watching me and you know that it's fair. So if you've ordered from me over the last three months, um, uh, at least uh, 30 uh, $50 you get a draw a, 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 um, a entry in the draw um, one entry for $50 um, two entries for $100 and and so on so as I say there's people in here with multiple entries so, okay so the very first one will be the mini cut and emboss machine and I am looking away trust me I'm no cheating here and the first person the person who's going to win the mini cut and emboss machine is Sharon Hildred. Thanks, Sharon. You had a big month with me this month, so I'm really pleased that your name's come out. So, Sharon, you've won the mini cut and emboss machine. So, um, let me know if you've already got one um, and I'll draw again. But uh, that's uh, that prize is yours. So, that's Sharon. I might put um, cut and emboss on there so at least I know. So, if Sharon, if your name comes out again, I'll keep drawing until I get someone who hasn't been drawn before. So the second prize is the um, the counting sheep uh, stamp set and dies. Again, if you've already got this and your name comes out, please let me know and I will draw again and I'll send you something else. Uh, so, and if it's Sharon, I'll keep drawing till I find somebody who's not Sharon. And the second one is Sam Wheatley. Sam, this is you. You've got the sheep and the dies the counting sheep and dies so hopefully you haven't picked that one up in celebration already but let me know and I'll as I say draw again so I'll just write counting sheep there and the final one we've gone pretty well here we haven't had any doubles up the bedazzled paper is and I'm doing and that is oh Sandra Henson so there you are, Sandra. You've got the bedazzled paper. So thank you, everyone. It might be Hanson, actually. I might have written that down um, wrong. But uh, Sandra, if you're a customer of mine and you're watching this, Sandra Henson or Hanson, um, the um, bedazzled paper is yours. And I will pop that in the post as well. Um, I don't think you could have too many 
of that particular item so i reckon we're pretty safe okay so that's our three prize drin drawers for today thank you for everyone who ordered and if you want to be in my um draw on for december for the which i'll do in um january um then um make sure you pop your orders in and as i say every multiple of 50 dollars gets you a prize in the draw so there you are so i'll pop those aside so i don't lose them and i'll get rid of my little santa box I'm going over it to the side so I can get them out of the way. So they're there. Okay, so that's all I needed to do in the prize draw world. I'll move the prizes as well. Get rid of everything that I don't need. There we are. Okay, so I have some crafting for you today. And I'm almost organised today. I'm not quite as organised as I should be because basically up till last night I had no idea what I was actually going to do. Um, but laying in bed this morning, I've had a couple of ideas So, and cruising Pinterest, as you do. That seems to be where I get a lot of my ideas, but don't tell anyone. If you're ever cruising Pinterest and you find something very similar to what you've seen me do, please um, just pick on by. Don't think too deeply about it. But, yes, I do get a lot of my ideas from Pinterest. Okay, so the first card I'm going to do is a fun fold, sort of like two cards in one card. I'm going to use the Merriest Frame dies and the Merriest Moments stamp set. Together it's the Merriest Moments bundle and the rectangle um, framelits are going to come or are going to come into the game as well. Um, I tried to steer away from my usual colours, but I kept myself coming back to the Evening Evergreen Cherry Cobbler combo. So I think that's what I'm going to, to go for. So to do this card, I have a normal sized card base for me, um, five and three quarters by um, eight and a quarter, and um, I scored in the middle. I also have a similar sized panel of the Cherry Cobbler, and I'm going to be cutting that down in a minute. And I've got another card, which I suppose you'd call a card base, but it's a folded piece of cardstock, and it's actually going to sit inside this um, main card base and it is actually an eighth of an inch smaller so it's actually a four inch by what five and five eighths inch card base and you can see it basically is like that eighth of an inch smaller all around I just wanted it slightly smaller so it would fit inside and not sort of overlap too much okay so I've given this a bit of thought but let's see if thoughts can become uh, actions can become proper looking cards so anyway I've got my two stitched um, rectangle dies here and it's I think it's about the third biggest one and the next one down and I'm going to actually cut a hole in my card base at the front so I would have used the square dies I think that probably would have gone slightly better but as many of us are mourning at the moment we lost our layered square dies in the current catalogue and we haven't had a replacement so i've had to i've gone for um, nested nested rectangles instead i suppose i could have actually come in with the trimmer and made myself a little window in the card but that just all sounded a bit complicated so i'm going to make sure i'm actually looking at the front of the card and forgive me if my camera goes a bit out of focus it's going to struggle a bit with the i don't usually bring the cut and emboss machine in just for that very reason so i'm going to just go smack bang right in the middle of the card front and as center as i can but i'm not quite going to stand up so i'm coming in over the camera so i can see if i'm central so this is going to um, make your card front a little bit less stay or a little bit less structural i suppose than if you didn't cut it so you couldn't go too big or you'd end up with it sort of very very flimsy but I think this one is probably just about as big as you can go for I felt and still have the card sort of hold its own weight so we have we have a bit of a window in the front of that card I'm really close to the camera there apologies okay so that's all I'm going to do for that at the moment then with my piece of cherry cobbler I'm just going to bring in to the well I've got the die cutting machine here I'm going to do the same size um, die and then the one slightly bigger and this is going to make me a little frame for the front of the card 
And my theory is that the little frame will add a bit of interest, but it will also, well, that last bit's always pretty tricky. Um, it will also add a back a little bit of the, the strength that we've lost. So it's just a tiny little, probably what, quarter of an inch wide frame. And I'll just get rid of my cut and emboss. Cool. Okay. So I can sit back down now. So the first thing I'm going to do is basically pop that little frame just exactly in the opening of the card, just to give it a little bit of a little bit of interest. And as I say, hopefully a little bit more structure back. So I'm just going to pop some, try and put some little bits of glue. I can see everybody popping on. Thank you for watching and all your congratulations to all my winners. Um, I'm going to flick through some and see if I can see some names. Who have we got? Oh, I've got Juliana, hello, and Kathy, and Judy, and Fran, Amelia. Oh, lots of names. It's so great. Donna from Washington State, thanks for joining me. And Jenny, hey, Jenny. Did I see Kathy as well? I thought I saw Kathy as well. Oh, and my dear, and my dear Naomi, watching while I blow dry a Labrador. <laughs> I wish you were here. You could be blow drying my Goldie. She's just too raucous. I think we had a, a professional dog cleaner come and do her once and he spent the whole time complaining about his bad back and she didn't um, make it any easier, I can tell you that. And since then I haven't dared because I just couldn't, could, <laughs> couldn't stand it. And then all the other groomers that I approach, you know, they all say, oh, no, we only do small dogs. And I sort of don't blame them. <laughs> she is a handful. And she'd rather play than sit still, I think. Anyway. Okay. Anyway, so Naomi, if you ever come to Tassie, I've got a job for you. So there we are. We have our, and again, I've overdone the glue a bit, but that's okay. We have our, our, our card front with our little frame there. Okay. So it's just like that. Uh, who else have I got watching go further down? Uh, Maureen, good morning, Maureen. Hope to see you in Zoom this afternoon and Gwenda and Barb and Judy. Judy did a lovely job of her last um, card class. She sent me some pictures and she, even though I'd uh, left out a piece of paper, she managed to work around it very well. And Robin and Susan, oh gosh, thanks for joining me, guys. I've wasted too much time going through the comments. I'll answer them all after the video is over. Okay, so there we are. So we have a little frame. So I might just put that aside to get the um, to let the glue sort of um, dry a little bit. So as we said, we've got this sort of second card that's going to actually go inside the first one. So what's going to happen? And I'll have to be very gentle. Is I'll glue the back of the little card, or the white card, into the back of the um, green one, and you'll basically, when you close it, you'll see that white gap through there. What I'm going to do is stamp most of my decorations on the inside and then try and mimic them on the outside with actual die cuts. So that's the theory and, uh, I, yeah, we'll see how it goes. It seemed like a good idea at 4 o'clock this morning. So what I'll do is I will just glue that in and I'm going to use the poinsettia die, um, stamps from the merriest, what is it, the merriest moments stamp set and the dies. I'm just going to pop that in. So as I say, it should have a fairly even um, gap all the way around, it's slightly smaller. And then I'll make sure I'll just do a test close that it does close because if I put too close to that score line, of course, it's not going to close properly. Or it's going to have a bigger fold than it should. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, so it sort of looks a bit like a bit of a book, doesn't it, with all its pages? And we're actually going to reinforce that um, illusion a bit later on with some gold um, metallic twine. Okay, so I have prepared earlier some of the poinsettia um, flowers and dye and leaves. So I may have to do some more, but we'll see how we go. So these are these are the ones I'm using for my charity cards but I will actually do some more and replace them so when I get charity cards finished they'll be new okay so I'm going to pop 
sort of down my, this is basically i'll show you being a bit slack aren't i it's the poinsettias from the merriest moments um stamp set and i have stamped them in sherry cobbler and the two little leaves are the two here and uh, i'm going to i have stamped those in the um evening evergreen and these a couple are uh, spare sort of leafy things i've also done i've done those in um soft succulent which is, seems to be a beautiful matching color so what i'm going to do is eventually pop these flowers top left and bottom right corner and then i'm going to bring in the leaves and pop them sort of like there and there and another one Oop. there and just sort of frame the um i actually want a little one there's some little ones frame the um the frame the frame if that makes sense in these little um images and what i'm going to also do is mimic it so I do the same thing on the white paper underneath so that when you open it, you've got the 3D effect of the actual um, die cut images on the front. And then when you open it up on the front, it's sort of mirrored inside. And then I'm going to do a bit of extra stamping on the inside as well. I hope that makes sense. I've sort of explained that very strangely. But anyway, so that's that's the plan. Watch it as we go. So what I'm going to do so I know where to stamp my images on the inside, I've just got my pencil just very lightly going to pop a little dot in each corner just so I know where roughly I'm going to put my stamped images okay so that's what I'm going to do there so I'm going to get these out I've got the big one which I put on a block so that's going to be in cherry cobbler and then the two little leaves in evening evergreen Got a bit of a splodge there. Where's my rubber? There we are. A bit of a glue splodge just in the corner there, as usual. Okay, cool. So get my cherry cobbler, which is here somewhere. Okay, so I've got my nice big flower here and obviously um, this one's sort of like a single layer whereas the outside is double layers but that's okay I'm not going to um, I won't double up on the inside too much okay so we know we're going to have one point set here in the top left hand corner so that's exactly what I'm going to do pop one up here so roughly where the dot is and in line we'll pop that there Okay, so there's that bin. We know then we're going to also have one in the bottom left-hand corner, or right-hand corner. We'll pop that there. Okay, and then with my evening evergreen, I'm not like, oh, this is turning out okay. I'm quite liking this. Yeah, succulent. Where's my evening, evening evergreen? Well, there it is. And the last one on the pile. I'll bring in and do my two leaves. So one going up that way and that way and the smaller one so they'll have a big one and a small one each coming out that way and where sort of doesn't fit perfectly does it I'm going to have to put it because I want it to be able to glue it to the actual frame it's going to have to be there that's a bit weird but anyway that's okay right so I'm going to give them each a little center so I'm going to use my bumblebee ink which is a perfect little center there I'm going to grab the little dots there that are good for the center 
you wouldn't have to go quite as careful as I am to sort of mimic the front and the back, but I just think it sort of looks quite, quite nice to have the same thing sort of carried through, a bit of a theme happening. Sorry if you lost my transmission then. It looks like it's a bit jumpy. I might stop moving and let the camera um, focus a little bit. Obviously, I'm a bit frantic for it. That looks a bit better. Anyway, stop moving. Sometimes my camera's not quite up to my speed. Okay, so there we are. So what I'm going to do now is when I close this up, I'm going to bring my flowers back in and basically sort of put them in the same spot as they are on the inside of the card. Just like that. Try and match them up as well as I can and have them just like that on the outside. So knowing where that is, and that tells me where I can put my glue. So I can put my glue towards the, the back end of it, so to speak. So it actually sticks to the card front and not underneath. And there we are. So I'm just gluing that. Oh, I could have. Oh, dimensionals might have been better. Anyway, it's all good. So I'll just make sure I haven't got any glue that's escaped into the back because our card will fall stick to itself if we have and then I'm going to do the same here so try and find the roughly the same angle that looks like it's there pop some glue on the opposite leaves and that one goes there okay cool a little bit of glue has escaped out the back of that Cool. All right. So now we'll bring in our leaves and the same sort of thing. I'm going to try and match them to where they actually are on the back, on the inside. So I'll pop the glue on the far edge so it sticks to the oops, sticks to the card base, the outside of the frame. Good morning, Faye. This one is a little one that goes there. Okay. And the same up here. I can do what I want with this one because that's sort of well and truly hidden by the frame. So I can bring that in wherever I would like. I'll pop that in there. And this one, just sort of mucked that up. I'm not really happy with the shape of that one is, but anyway, that's all right. It's fine. I'll pop that one there. Actually, I'm going to, no, that's all right. I'll pop it there. Okay. So that's the outside all decorated. See, so it's like you sort of see it there and you open it up and it's the same on the inside. And I don't know where those smudges are coming from. I must have ink on my hands or something. Anyway, it's all right. We're going to continue decorating the inside. So I'm going to pop my sentiment here in the middle just so that it shows through the gap. And I'm going to use not a huge sentiment because I want to do some more decorating around it. A joyful Christmas to you and yours, which is probably says it all. And I might do it in the cherry cobbler just to keep the lift, the lift of the colour happening. I love the cherry cobbler. And I'm going to just position it in the middle of that frame. Well, I put it there. No, I'll put it in the middle, I think. I've been struggling getting things straight lately. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer so I can get it partially straight. Apologies if I've come off the screen a bit. just find it a bit difficult when I'm looking at an angle. That may not even help, but let's see. There we go. Okay, so that's our sentiment in the middle. So what I thought I might do is just add some more decoration to the inside but around where this place is a blank now this is I'm definitely in unknown territory now so this might just you might be looking at it going no Julianne just leave it don't do any more but you know me often um, 
more isn't more it's just more if that makes sense <laughs> anyway you know what i mean i overdo it sometimes but this could be one of those times okay so i'm going to grab what am i going to grab i'll grab my block i don't think i want any more big poinsettias but i might do some of the little ones and some of the foliage around the place so we will get our cherry cobbler again so i want to keep in mind that i don't want to um i don't want to do i want to sort of do them so that you can see them excuse me through the frame a bit and um, i'll stick to those corners where my other little um pencil marks are and i should actually be using it i'll grab one using a, a foam mat under this stamp set because it is a photopolymer one and it will stamp better with a so I'm going to go right up in the corner with this little guy and the same down here. Okay. So you only sort of see their um, little edges on there. I'm going to give them some centres and then I'll bring some other leaves in as well. Should have bought that mat in before. You can see that that was to have stamped so much clearer than the others. Was a bit lazy before. Okay, so I'm going to just use. I think just use the little leaves for that. And there is actually a little, little, little leaf in the in the stamp set. I might use that instead of the big one. Clean those stamps off later. So it's just a tiny little leaf, sort of the same as the others. So I don't want to go too big. I'm going to run out of room. So again, I'm going to use my evening evergreen. And you guys put stop in the comments if you think I've done too much because I'll take I'll take word from you. But you know. Okay, so this one's going to have to go. I think it's going to have to go off the edge a little bit back at the back there. And then maybe another one just there. And this one can go, so I don't want to overlap the others. Can go there and there. For some reason, all, all my poinsettias need two leaves or it doesn't quite seem right. And then I'm going to grab my soft succulent and these pretty fern fronds that come with the set. And let's face it, I'm going to overdo it one way or the other. And I'm just going to pop some of those just in the gaps as well. Mostly because I've got some splodges there that I need to cover. I'm not seeing anyone telling me to stop yet, so you're obviously still happy. Not that I'm actually watching. Somebody might have said stop ages ago. Okay, so thankfully this green isn't going to show up too much on the backing of the dark green because I've gone a little bit crazy with that. Okay, I think that's probably enough of that one anyway. There is a little dot in the stamp set but I think I've probably got enough I think that's enough I just wanted to show you as many of the beautiful stamps and things as I could but I think that's probably enough so when you close it you are going to see yeah, actually I don't know I think I could probably go more what if I go the little dots no I don't like blank spaces with nothing in them so there's a little dot and if I grab my crumb cake which sort of is a good sort of background color I can even stamp it off. Not soft sea foam. For some reason, the end of my crumb cake stamp set has faded so that it actually looks the same green as, say, Coastal Cabana. That's really weird. Can you see that in the... Oh, what's happened there? Something's happened to my oh, print. Why would it print? 
anyway something happened to my computer then so you can see i don't know if you can see the color of my crumb cake end where i sort of have them all lined up looks very green whereas that's the color of crumb cake of course just looks really weird so i sometimes pick out sort of four different colors before i actually find my crumb cake i might have to swap the stickers around okay so i'm just going to stamp that off once and pop some dots around just to fill in some of that awkward blank space oh didn't stamp that off oh well doing it there for okay yeah that that's better that sort of fills in that background a much nicer I think than just plain cool okay so I think I will definitely stop now yep I like that better all right so that's the sort of front and the first panel and because we said this one's like a little book we've still got even more that we can do on the inside and now I've definitely ink splodged it oh dear one of those days I'm afraid ink splodges everywhere That's, what, that one's not going to come so I'll cover it with something I was going to pop some stamps on the inside as well so it's a really good one you can get lots and lots of chances to decorate things you've got three basically three levels of things to decorate which is really cool so what I'm going to do inside I'm going to use a second uh, I'm going to use a second sentiment stamp, so just something a little bit um, plainer. And I'm just going to bring in the plant, um, the large set here as well. So I'm just going to go Seasons Greetings for the inside sentiment. And then I'm going to, oh, I've got the little one all stamped up. I'll use the little one just to have a little point set here inside as well. So just pop that there. Thankfully, just where that splodge is is where I was going to go, or just below it. And we'll do a point set here there and a couple of leaves we'll use the bigger one because then i'll be able to cover my splodge there we are perfect splodge coverage mm -hmm. oh, someone's trying to message me here anyway it's all good and then I'll give him a little um, centre. And the one last thing we're going to do, which will really um, make it look like a little book, is we're going to bring in some gold twine. I'll just do my Merry Christmas season's greetings first. And again in the cherry cobbler. beautiful nice I like that that's good just sort of plain and that's obviously where you could um, do your writing and stuff like that so that's a, as in the say that's got a sort of lots and lots of opportunities for decorating there you've got your front which is there you've got your uh, your middle there which we've gone a bit crazy on but I think it still looks good and then you've got your inside as well so what I'm going to do is grab my gold twine so this is from comes together with a silver for, um uh, twine in the same set I can't remember the name of it now but I've used most of the silver and started on the gold I'm going to wrap it around the spine I think probably a couple of times and tie it on the outside just in a don't think I've got the bravery to do a bow today so I'm just going to do it as a knot I think they so have to be careful to turf, pull it from, um, firmly but not so firm that you sort of put an indent in your card so I think I probably need about that much Where's my scissors? what does it want to print for oh I think that's what, stop that 
weird stuff happening with my computer but I think that's because my mouse is over here being swallowed up by various stamp pads and things just cut that off there computers have a mind of their own sometimes so I'm just going to fold that and this is where you could probably do with a second set of hands if somebody's nearby you're going to have to hold it firm and tie it at the same time that's not too bad there we are. Just trim it. We don't want it too long. There we are. So it looks like a little book, doesn't it, that's held together with a with a bit of twine there on the edge. It adds a bit of bling, which is nice. I like that one. That's sort of cute. And you could just imagine that's that's unlimited. You could do any sort of stamp set that has the dies and sort of follow that theme, that theme through to the middle. So I like that one. I don't know what we call that. That's like a double card, level layer card or something like that. Anyway, it's quite nice. I like that one. So hopefully you like that one too. There we are. So that's the um, merriest frames bundle anyway, So which you've seen me use on multiple occasions before. Okay, so my second card will not use that. So I'm going to pack all these away for a second. So... Just go and grab yourself a coffee or something. Might take me a couple of minutes. I'm a bit messy. So I hope everyone's having a great day. Today happens to be um, inter um, International Card Making Day. Oh, yes, World Card Making Day. So uh, happy World Card Making Day, everybody. Sort of seemed quite relevant, quite appropriate that I was giving away my draw today. And we do have a Zoom this afternoon. If anyone lives in Australia, you um, fancy a bit of a Zoom crafting afternoon. Everyone, most people have their kits. I think um, Jenny, Jenny C's arrived today. Um, but uh, we have a challenge for people who haven't got a kit to just make a sort of an ad lib card. So if you'd like to join us and do that, we had a lot of fun when we did that here a while ago. So we thought we'd continue on the theme. I'm missing my little, oh, there they are, my little berries are there. Okay, so that's that's done there. Okay, so that is that card finished. Let's have a look at the other one. So the other one is using the, and I've only got half the way to um, actually um, designing this second one as well, so it could be a bit of an interest, interesting completion. Where is my stuff? This one uses the... She says, finding her stuff, the beautiful designer series paper and bundle that is the Whimsy and Wonder bundle. This one, coincidentally, is my sort of feature bundle for October's classes. So my at-home ladies and my class-by-mail ladies will be doing this bundle. Not this particular card. There's some other cards, but um, this uh, particular bundle. So if you like what you see and you'd like to do a class, please check my Facebook page and uh, you'll see the details there for October. Still taking orders. I, I sort of tend to with my classes. I take orders, you know, right until sort of mid-month, depending when things sort of peter out. But sometimes I do have to order some more stuff. So if you order late, you might not get your class till, you know, early next month. But anyway, it's all good. Okay, so it's the Christmas trees dies and I'm going to do a centre step, step easel card. Now, I haven't done one of these for such a long time. Um, I have all the bits cut there, but I suppose I should tell you, show you how to do the the actual cutting. So bear with me and I'll grab another piece of cardstock and actually cut one. So I'm going to use, she says, reaching towards the back of her cardstock, mint macaron for the base. Macaron. How do people say that? Macaron. It's not macaron because that's like the president of France or something. Uh, anyway, but there you go. So there we go. So I've got a normal A4 piece of whatever colour you call this and I'm going to cut it to five and a half inches wide. I'm going to leave the length all there because we do need the whole length of it. But I'm going to cut to five and a half inches wide. Then what you need to do is bring it to in line. If you've got a printer, uh, if you've got a, a trimmer like this one, it makes it really easy because you can line up on the left-hand side of the cutter as well as the right-hand side. So I'm going to line up the left-hand side to an inch and a quarter. I'm going to position my cutter at an inch. If you've watched my videos here about a year ago, I've made a, a few of these. Position your cutter at an inch 
and cut from one inch to five and a half inches and then stop. So you basically have a, a slit in your cardstock. Now turn it over and start position the other side at an inch and a half and then again starting it I'm just going to bring it back five and a half inches back to one inch. So you've ended up with your piece of cardstock has sort of a slit in it like this. Sorry I was off this thing there. A slit in it like that. So then you rotate it 90 degrees and you start some scoring. I might bring myself up a tiny bit to get on the camera a bit more. You start some scoring and I'll pop them. I've actually got a graphic of this one so I'll pop this up in the comments so you can see. Okay, so you start scoring with your score blade. So at an inch, you score from the, the slit you've made to the edge and from the slit you've made to the edge. So basically outside the cut there. So just there and then you bring it in and at two inches, you do the same thing. So from the score out, the score out. So there you are. So there and there and there and there. Then at four and a half inches, I know this off, I've seen, it was funny, I could remember how to do this one. I obviously did so many. At four and a half inches, you take it between the cuts. So just in the middle there. Okay. And then at five and a half inches, you take back outside the cuts again. So from the cut to the edge. Okay. Cool. So you've got a score, 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 score in the middle, and then the score's on the outside again. Then oh, I'm open it up. You take it all the way along and the next one you score all the way across at nine inches. Oh, my score's fallen out. So all the way across at nine inches. Okay, so that's, and this bit forms your little easel at the back. I'll just get rid of my uh, trimmer. So then it gets a bit like a Chinese puzzle because you've got to, do all the mountains and valleys and things like that but so this one goes down like that don't be don't be too rough with any of it because they will bend where they're not supposed to bend so you've got a bit of a step there and then the step goes up like that and that's where it gets flat so you see and then this bit which you've scored at the nine inches folds up and under there so and then I'll just burnish those scores don't get too caught up in the measurements as I say I'll pop it my little graphic which I find it's easier to see it in front of me I don't know about you guys um, I'll just burnish all those folds okay so that is the basis of this easel it's a center step because you can see there's a step in the center and it's an easel because that little front bit fits there and you put a little easel foot on the front there so it just doesn't it sits up nice and straight so that's that one okay looks a bit like that one of the more complicated but it's it's a lovely fold so then what i've got is various bits of cardstock and designer series paper that will fit the various front facing panels and i've used the really pretty sort of silver embossed um, what we call it, uh, oh, holly leaves and berries for the designer series paper. Okay, so the first one we've got is one to go on this little bottom foot part. So I'm just got, and the contrast colour I'm using obviously is Blushing Bride, which seems to go just beautifully with the, the mint macaron, macaron. Which I thought was like mint macaroon, like one of the little biscuity things, but um, it's obviously not got the double O on the end, unless you call them something different in other countries. Okay, so there's a layer of the pink, of the blushing bride, and this beautiful designer series paper. A bit sloppy with my glue there. On there. So then we're going to have to think of something that we can use as a little doorstop for that. So I haven't actually thought that far ahead yet, but I'm sure we will together. We'll work something out. Okay, there. And then we've got these various sort of front-facing bits here. So the side 
Oh no, we'll do the bottom one first. This little one across the bottom, that's an inch wide or deep. So this one is, this blushing bride is seven eighths of an inch and um, what, five and a half, five and three eighths long. It's going to pop on there. And then, of course, I've got a corresponding piece of designer series paper, which is skinnier again. So this one is three quarts of an inch wide and five and a quarter long. There we are. And for down the sides, these ones because that's an inch and a quarter wide there where we put our first score so this is an inch and an eighth in blushing bride be careful because you have to sort of slip this down in that little gap there so it's good if you've got glue that'll let you have a bit of a wriggle to get into the right place which thankfully ours does there we are and I've got the same for the other side. I'm ploughing on ahead here because this is the part I did actually design. I haven't actually designed how we're going to decorate the card itself yet. That could be a bit interesting when we get that far. I'm sort of trying to talk and think and do at the same time, trying to plan ahead as to what we can do. It's what you do when you sort of plan your and your lives about a, a prize draw and then didn't get much further than that. Okay, so then we've got these are an inch wide and they must be three and a, what, three and a quarter long. Thankfully this one, this paper doesn't have an up and down, we're sort of really in it, but um, you've got to sort of be careful that you get your ups and downs right. Your orientation's right. And that one there. Okay. There we are. So that's the paper part of it. That's really cute, isn't it? I love this design. I love sometimes you think, oh, I haven't done one of those for a while. And you think, oh gosh, why haven't I? Because I really, really like it. So I've got a piece of blushing bride that's actually cut for that centre panel panel there. Just like that. Um, so I think that's three, I'll measure it for you. I think it ended up being three inches. I haven't got inches here, haven't I? Yes, three inches wide, just because that's what we had left in the middle, and about three and a half inches long. So that little piece has been cut to sit just in there. So I'm going to do that part at least. I know that's what I'm going to do. Where we go from here is a mystery. So I did cut a white piece that was a bit smaller than that. There. Um, but I'm assuming that's what I expected that I would do, that I would decorate that bit. Is that what I'm going to do? I don't know. Or would I just decorate straight onto the pink with a white no, I might put the white there. Okay, so I've got a panel of white and, uh, yeah, no, I'm going to leave it off because I'll have to stamp on this. Okay, oh, probably wish I'd gone a little bit further than that in my head. But anyway, let's, let's see how we go. I am sort of thinking I might steal one of the designs from the card class itself. Just, you know, no point reinventing the wheel if you don't have to. And so the card class itself has a really cute little, what is it, sort of like a paper patchwork card where you sort of patch together three different pieces of cardstock to make a sort of a jigsaw puzzle. And um, the ladies yesterday in the class, in my class here had lovely time trying to put their jigsaw puzzles together. Um, but anyway, and then you decorate with the stamps and the dies over the top. So I think that's probably what I'll do here. Okay, so I'm going to pop, I'm going to use these little cute Christmas trees from the die set. So we've got there's one little one here that looks like it's got sort of baubles on it or snow coming in front of it or something like that. I'll just bring it a bit closer. There's lots of little dots on it, little white dots. And then we've got this little guy as well. It looks like he's already been decorated. So I'll use that, use those two. Um, it might do for a minute. 
Okay, so we're going to have our, oh, I've lost my card here. This one's going to sit on the front face like that. So if I bring in the stamps, I might put one. As I say, I'm stealing the pattern from the class. I just want to get it into the right position. Someone's desperate to get me this morning. I better check. Hang on, sorry. No, nothing. It's just with my dad unwell. I don't like to leave messages go too long, if you know what I mean. You never know. You think you're in um you're in safe land and then all of a sudden something happens and you take two steps forward and four steps back. But that wasn't him. That's good. I can rest now. Um, okay, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I've got the um, blushing bride and the, the taller of the two Christmas trees and I'm going to pop one just about there just to be a rebel. Okay, so that's the pink one. Then what I'm going to do is grab some strips of some leftovers of the, the um, mint macaron and the blushing bride. I'm going to grab the die set which is here and I'm going to cut out there's some really cute little embossed trees so there's these two it's so like a little tall one a tall skinny one and a short fat one so they're really cute so I'm going to do one of each color that I've got here Pop that aside. as I say I'm cheating a bit now you don't really want to sit there and watch me mull over a design for the next half an hour and then have it turn out to be quite horrible. So we'll stick with what I'm what I've already done. So I'm going to pop, doesn't really matter which, might do the big one in do it that way around. I'll stand up so I can get a good turn happening. Sitting down where you die cut is just not possible, I've decided. Well not possible for me. like trying to uh, rub your belly and pat your head at the same oh you broke ah. I think my um, magnetic plate has got the grooves in it are a little bit thick and so things tend to get stuck hopefully my green one will be all right yes just have to pop that other one through again and hopefully you won't get stuck onto the plate this time that's better nearly went because <laughs> it's so fine I might have to grab myself a new magnetic plate eventually so and I might use that little bit that broke as well waste not want not anyway so I'll keep those take that away oh. sit myself down I'm feeling weak today that was really heavy okay so we've got that and we've got that and we've got that so what I'm going to do now is bring the green one and sort of just pop him sort of overlapping the, the pink one and then I'm going to bring the long pink one and pop him off to the side. Looks a bit um, confusing at the moment, but bear with me. It's quite a nice design when you see it all together. And as I say, if you like what you see and you live in Australia, you can grab the design that I'm stealing this from in, in the card kit in the class. So it's got to be really careful putting glue on this little fine end here. If you're anything like me, you'll overdo it. So I'm going to bring him in there. Okay. And his little friend just a little bit further to the right. And I've put too much glue on. Oh, well. There we are. My youngest was supposed to go for his um his uh, shot today, his jab. I hope you remembered. He didn't sleep here last night, so I have no idea where he is and hopefully he remembered to go. I'd hate to him to make an appointment this important and then forget it because he's caught up doing goodness knows what somewhere. 
Okay, so that's those. So what I'm also going to do is grab a scrap of white and I'm just going to stamp one of the little Christmas trees and another one of the tall Christmas tree and stamp them and die cut them. So I'm going to have a green tall Christmas tree and a pink of the little one. And I'm going to die cut those. I might do that out of camera. Oh, so there's the, the little die and the big die. Okay, so we've got that one. Once the kids are done, that'll be the family just about done, so which is nice. We wait and see whether they tell us we need to have boosters, which is a big controversy at the moment, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think Dad with his chemo will have to have a booster, but that's just extra precautions with his immune system, of course. That's what happens when you're on cancer treatment. And probably Mum as well, because they're both in their 80s. But anyway, we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to, I've got those die cut and I'm going to pop that one off to the side and I'm going to pop this little guy in front there. So you can see we've got a whole series of Christmas trees happening there, haven't we? But I also need a sentiment box. So I'm going to use the sentiment box from the seasonal layers. Where is it? Seasonal labels? Seasonal something. Seasonal label dies. Really, really nice dies, these ones. Even if you didn't get the stamp sets, the, die, the um, sentiment boxes are lovely. And that, actually, I'd suggest you get the stamp set as well because it's one of my favourites. It's the one with all the pine cones you might have seen me use um, just recently in a couple of videos. So I'm going to grab a sentiment box in white. Hopefully, I've got enough in that piece. I didn't do a very good job of conserving paper there. Let's see. Sorry, I'm off camera again, doing my die cutting. Oh, just did it. Just enough of a scrap of white to do it. There we go. So that's going to sit. You could see why I was actually thinking, do I do it on there or do I do it on there? And I think I'm quite happy that I've done it on the, on the white. So I'll move these little guys away. I'm going to grab some dimensionals. Just still sitting, most of my dimensionals are still sitting out where I've got set out for my class tomorrow. I had a class yesterday, which was really nice. I had five lovely ladies come and make these whim whimsy and wonder cards. And I've got another class tomorrow with a different group of ladies. So that one's gone silly. I struggle a bit with my big... Um, meaty hands with these little tiny dimensionals they're very very flimsy very small okay so there we are so I'm going to pop oh I probably should have stamped it first hey eh? eek oh, I'll pop it on there and hopefully I can stamp it when it's on so let's have a look we'll pop that there and that's going to go so it's going to be slightly off the edge but and slightly fold, just sort of, yeah, sort of hiding the bottom of those little trees. Sorry if I've gone off the camera a bit. And it's going to go there. Looks a bit silly without its sentiment, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, then this little guy is going to go on some dimensionals as well, just to give it a bit of interest. I think the guys are going... You guys leave it off? Okay. See you later. Okay, so yeah, pop him off to the side. Just like that. And this little one is gonna sit up 
on top of the on front as well. And I'm really making it difficult for myself now. I might leave those on. I might stamp the sentiment, see if I can get away with it. Doing things completely out of the right order. So I'm going to use the May the love of the season warm your home and fill your heart. And I'm going to do that in, going to do that, my grammar's not very good today, I'm going to do that in black. And hopefully it'll work on that sentiment box that I've already attached. But if not, just imagine um, it worked because I should have done it before. That's okay. Bit of a splodge there, but I'll cover it with a with a with a whatever rhinestone. Yes. Hint for future. Always um, stamp your sentiments first. Card making 101. Anyway, so that's there. Okay. So we've got our little Christmas tree forest there with our sentiment and a bit of a splodge, but we'll survive. Okay, so there we are. So that's going to pop onto the front of our card and that just sort of finishes that off really lovely, I think, just like that. And we have to think of a, we have to think of a foot and I think I know what I'd like to do for our foot for our easel card. So I'll just pop that on there. I'll we'll come back with some bling in a minute and cover that splodge. Okay, so we need a little foot for here. What I think I might do is quite sweet. It's got this little um, little uh, berry, um, holly berry setup happening here. So I'm just going to grab my little piece of, and oh, that's too small, grab a piece of scrap white. So a piece that's smaller than that. Scrap white, where are you? No. Has to be that bit. I'm going to get that, and again in my black, which probably look a little bit weird against all the other colours. Just grab that, and then I'm just going to grab my blends, which I've still got over here because we use them in our class. I've got my mint macaron, my dark mint macaron. And I want a pink that sort of matches Blushing Bride. They don't actually have Blushing, Blushing Bride, um, Blushing Bride blends, unfortunately. But this is um, Flirty Flamingo, so I might use that. Just a light Flirty Flamingo. You hardly even know it's there. And that. And then I'll grab the die and I'll cut this out and this can be my little foot. I think it'll look quite nice against the other little um, the hollies of the no, wrong stamp set, wrong dies. Where's the dies? Dies, 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 dies. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. So just a little bit there. I'm just going to cut that out. This one was very confusing to my ladies yesterday because it doesn't have an obvious top and bottom. You have to sort of rotate it until you find something that looks like it fits the die. But once you've seen it, once you've seen the, the bits that match, it's, it's easy, easier trying to do it the first time. There's some weird and wonderful configurations happening. So we've got our little holly there. So pick our card up into its final sort of spot, work out where we want the foot to be. So I'm going to pop that just on the front there, just like that. Put the little holly leaves at the top, I think. Mm, no, that's not natural for me that way, I think. So just there like that. Pop some dimensionals on the back. I had my big ones now, so the big one seems to be over in this as well. I can't even find them. No, where are they? They're here. Okay, I'll use these end bits. 
I had a wonderful plan that I was just going to pick everything up and not put anything away. I was just going to put it in my craft room after the class because I've got another one on Sunday tomorrow. I was just going to pick it all up, not even pack it away and move it sort of on location into the craft room so I didn't have to do too much tomorrow. And uh, it doesn't quite work that way when you want to make a video. So I'll get this one just in the centre, in the sort of centre-ish. That's about it. And then that will stop our card, which I have to score that a little bit more. That'll sort of fit, stop our card from flipping forward. It's this one that needs to be scored more. So the idea, with the real trick with this card is to score your lines pretty tight so that it, yeah, that's better, so that it actually fits. It sort of forces itself down onto that foot and won't flip forward. So there we are. So we've got that one. I'm going to do some bling, as I talked about, to cover my ink splodge. But, and I think we need some Stella as well. But anyway, let's get our bling. Where's my bling, 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 bling? Here it is. What's left of this one? Grab my, take my pick tool. So I'm going to get one there. And that's going to go straight over that splodge there. Ta-da! It never even happened. I'm going to use one as sort of like a star on the top of one of the Christmas trees, sort of like that, just there like that. And then another one, just use three. Where's that one going to go? Over here somewhere, it sort of has to be for my triangle, doesn't it? For my um, yes, my triangle of yeah, that's sort of sort of okay. Yep, yeah, that'll do. That one's slightly off where it should be. Okay, so there we've got some some bling on the front there. So we're making our Christmas trees look a bit special. I'll get some Stella, which is also over here. I'm really unpacking my whole class, aren't I? When I told myself I wouldn't. Where's my Stella? Oh, there. Where did my Stella go? Yeah. I'll get some Stella onto these trees. Just a bit. Onto this. Probably only you, me, and another card maker would um, realise that there was any Stella on these, but that's the main thing. Probably could have done it before I'd lay it up. That's okay. I don't want to put too much. There we are. Okay. So, yeah, you can see there's a bit of glimmer on those ones. So that is... My second card, as I say, this one is using the um, Whimsy and Wonder stamp set or bundle, which is the one I'm featuring in this month's product class. So if you're interested, you live in Australia, pop over to my Facebook page and you'll see the designs that I have made for the class. This isn't one of them, but I suppose it's an example that if you buy the bundle and the paper, you could probably whip this one up pretty quick based on what you do in the, in the class itself. Okay, so that one, and obviously when you put it into the envelope, it just folds flat like that. It's a really nice little design. I love it. I love it. It's got a wayward dimensional. That's why it was sticking. Okay, so that's the second card. Um, so that's enough today, I think. I think I've gone for a well good on an hour today, haven't I? Anyway, so there's our two cards that we've done today, plus we did our prize draw. So congratulations to everyone who won their prizes. Um, I'll pop those into the comments as well. We've got our Whimsy and Wonder on the left-hand side and our Merriest Moments bundle on the right-hand side, which is sort of like a little book with its binding on the on the edge there. So, uh, as I say, any questions about anything you've seen today, they're all current products. If you'd like um, to chat about them, please drop me a line. Um, if you haven't got a current demonstrator and would like a catalogue, please let me know as well. I'm happy to send you the current catalogues out. Anyway, have a great weekend, everyone, wherever you're watching from and what happened, whatever happened day it happens to be where you are watching from. And I will see you all 
um, next time. Thanks a lot.